guys, thanks for joining me. I'm Rick, the Honest Mechanic. If you're new to the channel, thanks for joining me. But for those three of you that watch me religiously, you'll know that I work on lawnmowers, or won't start at all. Chainsaws. <laughs> and as well, Ford F-150s. This one happens to belong to my father-in-law. It's a 2013. He's going through a lot more gas than he's supposed to be. So I was going to do a tune-up today. So stick around to watch that. All right, guys. So before we get started, let's check to see how many liters per 100 kilometers he's actually burning right now. Uh, this is a Canadian vehicle, so that's how we measure fuel economy here. And I'll have that converted for you guys in miles per gallon as well. So let's clear this out. Oh, we've got an oil change to do as well. We'll clear that out as well because we're going to do full tune-up. All right, so it's showing 16.5 liters per 100. That equates to about 14.2 miles per gallon. Not exactly great considering he said he was getting much better, closer to about 13-ish. And as for mileage, he's got 136,600 kilometers, which equates to about 85,000 miles. All right, so we're going to start with the obvious. I'm going to do an oil change because he needs one no matter what. And I've already got all the oil purchased for it. And I like to do it while the engine oil is still warm. And... Let's take a look in here. So there you go, guys. This is a five liter Coyote engine, as far as I can tell. I mean, if you guys actually know 100%, I thought it was a Coyote. Uh, link it down below in the comment section, because I'd like to know. But uh, we're gonna do the oil change, and we're also gonna change the spark plugs, the air filter, and of course, the oil filter. Um, there is no fuel filter that is serviceable on these trucks, as well as there's no uh, cabin air filter serviceable on the trucks either either so we're gonna do the obvious I consider that a pretty good tune-up we're gonna clean the mass airflow sensor I'll show you how to do that real quick but let's get underneath the truck and start dropping some oil okay so here we are underneath we have the drain plug here and we're just gonna crack her loose nice and slow I have brought two oil containers because this engine holds about seven liters of oil and I want to make sure that I don't make a mess. Oh. oh, that was tight. I always like to bring the oil pan closer to the plug. That way there it doesn't splash around. I always make a mess anyways, but I try and minimize it. All right. This thing is going to be the longest bolt I've seen as a drain plug. Look at the length of this thing. Definitely wasn't going to fall out. Especially not with that being so tight. Okay, so just to be on the safe side, let's take out the other pan. Move this one aside. Finish draining it with this one. Oh, and there's my mess. There's my mess. Ah. I had no choice. I can guarantee you, though, I would have made a mess and a bigger mess if I didn't change the pan. All right, we're going to put the oil plug back in place. There we go. We're not going to go super tight this time, but we're going to go make sure it's snug and that it won't fall out. I should actually look up the torque spec. That's what I should do. There we go. Snug. I'm going to wipe that clean to make sure that there's no other drips. All right, now let's change the oil filter. All right, so the oil filter on these trucks is located right down there. And there's actually a little bit of a, like a scupper or like a funnel that uh, is supposed to drain down all the excess oil 
into the pan. So I've set up my pan down below. And what I'm going to do to make more access to this is I'm going to remove the top of the air box and the intake here. And to do that, all I'm going to need to do is remove this, uh, uh, this screw right here. Loosen that off, that clamp. And this clip, and if you actually open up underneath your finger, you just pop that loose like that. Get that out of the way. We're going to disconnect our sensor as well. There's a little clip in the bottom of it. You need to make sure that you pull that little clip right there. And then wiggle it loose. See that? That's the right clip I'm talking about. Make sure you pull that out. And then we're just going to disconnect this. Grab my screwdriver. Do this real time instead of cutting it in sections. Get that loose. A little bit hard to do with one hand. There we go. That comes out. And then the top of the air box. Sorry guys. The top of the air box should come out just like that. Oh, and I did, sorry, forget one vacuum line back there. No big deal. It's out of the way. I don't need to go any further. And of course, we're going to change the air filter. So while we're here, before we... Uh, change that oil filter. We're just going to take a look under right here. And well, it's not the best looking air filter I've seen, but definitely not the worst. But we're going to throw another one in there anyways. I'm going to vacuum up some of these little critters. Well, they're not little critters, but the critters got in there and put some uh, seeds and whatnot in the box. But this is going to give us way more access to the filter. So let's do that now. All right, I can't seem to set up my camera uh, very good for this particular section here of the video, but I'm going to have to try and do this one-handed. Oh, by the way, guys, I like to use these uh, three-jawed uh, oil filter removers. I think they work fantastic. They grip really well, and they fit multiple sizes. There you go. Very difficult to do with one hand, but you guys kind of get the idea. So I'm going to pull that filter out, slap a new one on. All right, so here we go. We got the new filter. I've got a little bit of uh, fresh oil on that seal, and it's ready to go back in. All right, so that's hand tight. Cool. Now let's get on to cleaning up this mess. All right, so let's get the vacuum in here. All right, so it's not perfect, but it looks much better. And now, let's move on to removing our uh, mass airflow sensor. All right, so to remove the mass airflow sensor, we just have a couple of torques to remove. And it's going to come straight out just like that. Remove that screw as well. And this little guy, because it was sitting like this, reads basically airflow and the amount of airflow you're getting into the engine and helps the computer calculate how much fuel to be injected for that amount of airflow. So if this sensor happens to be a little bit dirty and it's not accurate, well, of course, it might be spraying more fuel than it actually needs. So let's go over to the garbage can and we're going to give this a quick clean. All right, so my garbage can is actually pretty full. It's garbage day tomorrow, luckily. And we're not going to be reusing this filter anyways. So what we're going to do is we're just going to simply take some of this sensor clean, which is good for mass airflow sensor cleaners. Uh, and we're just going to simply spray the whole outside body of this sensor. And we're going to pay attention to spraying these little guys on the inside as well. 
and then we're just going to let it air dry just like that and then we're going to do the reverse by putting it back in place all right we're going to grab a new filter nice and clean put that in place just like that reattach the intake reattach our uh, mass airflow sensor and then we're going to move on to the spark plugs all right so before we get too far ahead of ourselves and we forget we have our oil to put back into the engine and this engine actually likes to run on a 5w20 always run what the manufacturer recommends i say that i feel like i say that in every one of my videos but it's because i really truly believe in it all right so this thing takes about seven quarts or seven liters ish and then uh we'll move on to the plugs okay so moving on to the plugs so we need to remove there's a little red uh, anti-tamper uh, piece of plastic on these connectors and be gentle with them because of the heat. They tend to break and then you end up having an issue removing the actual connector, which is what I'm having an issue with now. I'm so used to working on smaller stuff. And look at me now, I'm looking, I'm, I'm using my small still screwdriver to get this done. <laughs> there we go. Starting to move now. All right, so these have been there for quite some time. Definitely a little bit difficult to remove. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to tackle this one at a time so that we don't make any mistakes. Remove our eight millimeter bolt. That is what's holding down the pencil coil going through the cylinder head and valve cover, of course. And this should pull straight out, just like that. Kind of cool. Very simple, no wires to replace. And then right down below that hole in that cavity, right down in there, We've got a spark plug, so I'm gonna grab my wrench. So I got my wrench, my spark plug uh, got my spark plug socket. Oh nice. I thought for sure these things were gonna be like seized and placed. Look at this, this is turning out real nice. For those of you who didn't know, I had a 2009 Ford F-150 myself, but I had the 5.4 liter Triton with the really really long plugs on them and those were temperamental they apparently were notorious for breaking in the head and that used to cost thousands of dollars to replace but this looks to be hopefully this is an indication of the rest of the uh, plugs but wow that came out beautifully really nice and it's got the Ford logo on it so I'm, I'm gonna assume this is an original plug from back in 2013 so it's probably about time to get them replaced so let's get a new plug in here okay so here's our new plug i'm going to be using an auto light iridium xp plug so let's just take a quick look here the difference between the two obviously this one's the used one and there's not too much wear on the electrode but it's there I mean, uh, definitely going to make a nice difference. And before I put in a new plug, especially on something like this, it's a little bit harder to get to. I like to put a bit of uh, antices compound just on the threads. You don't want to go touch any anything up further than this. And back home she goes. And after she's snug, I only have seven more of these to do. And uh, by the way, usually the torque on these spark plugs is written on the box. At least it is for NGK. All right, so according to the website, the torque on these plugs 
is 7 to 15 foot pounds. Perfect. All right, I'm going to put the coil back in place. Like that. All right, nice and tight. That's good. Push the connector back on, make sure it's connected. And it is. Excellent. All right, now. Seven more to go. All right, so I've got all eight plugs uh, replaced. That actually went much easier than I thought. Got the oil topped up, and that's when I found this. In the bottom of the box of all my parts, the new drain plug. I don't know how I missed this. I normally crawl underneath the vehicle with this with me uh, because I replace it all the time because there's a new seal on this one sometimes you can replace just a gasket but on this truck you got to replace the whole bolt they're only a few bucks and honestly it's good insurance that way there you know you're not going to have any leaks so you know what that means this job is just gotten a whole lot more interesting okay so here we are back underneath i'm a new drain plug i got a clean uh catch can here because uh in case i'm not quick like a ninja and I drop a whole pile of oil, I'll hopefully be able to reuse it. But I'm hoping that my ability to get this one out and this one in really, really quickly is going to work. I've got confidence, I think. Or I'm just going to have a whole pile of oil on myself. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to put some pressure on the threads, and then as soon as that plug feels loose, this one is going to be ready to go. You guys think I can do this without making a mess? I don't know. I'm normally not this, uh, this silly. Okay, so this plug is loose. All right, here we go. Ha, ah, yeah, that's not so bad. Not so bad at all. And you guys thought I couldn't do it. Okay. Let's torque this up. Fresh new plug. Fresh oil. All right, now, now we're done. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna give this a try. We got full oil, new plugs, new air filter. Clean mass airflow filter. Oh yeah, I gotta remember, I gotta clear that out for him. Well, let's see how she runs. All right. Turn over a little bit longer than I thought. But, running real smooth. All right, so the only thing left to do now is clear that uh, oil change notification and send it back to him, and we'll check back with him in about a week. So how do we reset the oil change required? Well, actually quite easy. After we clear out of these screens here, we're going to go back home. You go down to settings, you press on the left. Should get the camera so you guys can see. Settings, we're gonna go down to vehicle, down to oil reset, and then we're gonna set to 100%. Reset cancel, oh, we have to hold it. Resetting, reset complete, and there we go. So now, if I go back, all the way to our gauge mode to our fuel economy which is where he looks normally we 
turn off the truck, key it back on, that message should be gone. Of course, we're going to clear this out. There we go. That's how we clear that out. So we're going to, like I said earlier, we're going to check back with them in about a week, and we'll see if this actually gets better. All right, guys, so it's been about a week. We got the truck back. He's been using it daily. Let's check the mileage here. So we got 137,188, or 181.9 kilometers. Uh, and check it out. Proof's in the pudding. It's down to 11.8 liters per hundred. Uh, I don't know what, to, what else to say, guys. That's what a full tune-up will do. I hope you guys liked the video. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.